What up, everybody, and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz, and I talk about blades, and today I'm very happy to talk about one of my favorite current lines of American-made knives in 2022. And, unfortunately, it's very hard for me to talk about my favorite American-made knives because I think most of the American knife manufacturers have been screwing the pooch for years now and they're getting their asses handed to them by all of the higher end budget Chinese brands that have all they've just exploded in the last five years we've all seen that but today we're not going to focus on any of that bullshit we're going to talk about the Kershaw Launch series of side opening automatics we're going to start out with the Kershaw Launch 13. Now, this is uh, one of the newest models in the Launch series that has started. Um, it started with the Launch 1, of course, and it has gone on through the Launch 14, this being the Launch 13. So the second to last release, one of the more new uh, releases from Kershaw USA and I want to say I'm sorry for the shaking if I get real shaky guys uh, this is just just something with this COVID crap that I'm still fighting but I have uh, moved the camera to where I'm resting my hands on the tabletop and that's hopefully that's keeping that down I'm not having to elevate my hands up but let's go ahead and talk about the Kershaw Launch 13 because we're not going to spend all of this video just reviewing this knife it's been out for a few years now there's probably 200 Kershaw Launch 13 videos on YouTube uh, there's plenty of talk about it so we'll just talk about it a little bit and then I'm going to bring out the remainder of my Kershaw launch series collection not a lot of knives admittingly but I do have a few and that is because I think hands down with zero competition the Kershaw USA launch series of automatics are absolutely zero competition the finest made automatic that you can get for the money on top of that an American-made automatic. Now, money-wise, let's talk about that. We'll talk about the 13 here. This is one of the more expensive models from Kershaw, so this thing's got to cost three or $400, right? It's an American-made side-opening automatic. It's got to cost hundreds and thousands and millions of dollars, right? No. The entire Kershaw launch series starts out under a hundred dollars and the most expensive model the newest launch 14 is less than a hundred and fifty dollars these are fabulous fabulous knives for the money you can pick up the launch 13 here in 2022 it averages wherever you get it between $124 and $128. I think that's a killer price. Uh, I did pick mine up from Cutlery Shop. There is their information. They are a legit, legit online retailer. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you like getting a case candy, free stuff with your stuff, um, they sent me a box of full of crap. They didn't know who I was. I did not approach them as Baz on Blades, just a regular customer. So inside the box was the knife, of course. Then they send this tag, a nice little flight tag, a uh, key ring. You know, we'll throw that in the giveaway box or whatever. Uh, they put a bag of candy in there and I ate that shit. Uh, and then you get a sticker too. Stay sharp cutleryshop.com. Check them out. They're a really, really good business. So the Kershaw Launch 13, Kershaw Launch 13, 7650 is going to ship in a regular Kershaw USA sort of box. You can see here, made in USA. Uh, inside that, you will find a folded up piece of paper that's got marketing information, warranty information for Kershaw. Uh, the knife itself which is uh, an automatic knife and regulated we'll talk more about that um it comes in a plain plastic bag 
Kershaw's packaging is minimal, and I am okay with that as long as the product stays this fine, and it is fine. I have had five or six of these American-made automatics from Kershaw come through my hands, and every one has been perfect. Perfect action, super hard firing, nice springs in them, perfect machining, perfect finishing, the anodization on the aluminum handles. It's, they've all been awesome. Again, I've got three examples out here we will take a look at. First, let's talk about, you know what, I don't even know if my frames per second that I'm filming in is going to capture this opening. I think I'm doing this in 4K at uh, 30 frames per second. So we'll see if that works out for this automatic. I didn't think about that before starting the video. Um, let's go ahead and get the specs out of the way on this. It is a full-size knife. Uh, you're looking at three and a half inches for your blade length. That's about nine centimeters. Uh, the blade width at the widest is 15 sixteenths of an inch or 2.5 centimeters. Uh, blade stock thickness, 122 thousandths of an inch or just over three millimeters. Uh, your handle length is four and a half inches or 11.5 centimeters. Handle width at the widest is one inch or 26 and a half millimeters. Your handle thickness, 472 thousandths of an inch or 12 millimeters. Um, as it should be on this automatic, the stock pin diameter is greater than the stock thickness for the blade steel. Very much needed because automatics hammer on the stop pin. Uh, you're looking at 152 thousandths of an inch there or 3.8 millimeters. Overall length, 8 inches or 20 centimeters. Behind the edge thickness on this flat bladed worn cliff is 19 thousandths of an inch or 0.49 millimeters. Handle to blade ratio, excellent at 0.77, that's 77%, and a very svelte weight on this, 2.47 ounces or 70 grams. That's pretty doggone good, guys. 2.47 ounces for three and a half inches of blade length. Uh, nearly, nearly three and a half inches of cutting edge. Very efficient as far as the blade grind and profile go there. Um, for eight inches overall, that's really good. 2.47 ounces or 70 grams. I'm very appreciative of a nice lightweight, uh, high quality knife in my pocket as many of you are as well. So let's get into materials. One of the best things about the Kershaw launch series is the blade steel and it is a step up from many production quality production automatics and they are using uh, crucible steels CPM 154. CPM 154 is the uh, powder metallurgy version of 154 CM. 154 CM was developed in 1970, the year I was born, and I feel uh, much of a kindred to it for some reason. I don't know. I just really love this steel. Uh, it was developed to use in turbine jet engines uh, for turbine blades. So it's high wear, high heat cycle resistance. Um, and it trickled into, I believe, I want to say Bob Loveless was the first of the major makers, custom makers that brought it into the knife world. It exploded. And then for about 10 years, around 1990, it was the best stainless steel you could get. Benchmade used it. Uh, everybody used it. Hitachi Steel out of Japan copied it in ATS-34. And a lot of companies, production companies, went back and forth between 154CM and ATS-34 as it was available. Now, in 2006... Crucible developed a powder metallurgy version of this steel, and it's the same steel, but it's going to have a much more refined and consistent grain structure, which uh, basically it, it sort of amplifies the different characteristics of the steel. You know, if it's 
if it takes a good edge, if it's got a tighter grain structure, it'll take a finer edge. If it's got good toughness, a finer grain structure typically adds to the toughness. If it's got good wear resistance, it typically adds to that. It's almost like doing uh, just a sort of a souped up version of the steel. Not radically different, but noticeably improved. CPM 154CM is an excellent excellent steel fantastic in a side opening automatic where most companies use regular 154 cm that is a huge selling factor for these knives um, of course in the handle your material is 99.99999 percent aluminum with stainless steel small parts that are black finished uh, this handle is exquisitely machined in every area. There is detail everywhere, everywhere on this handle. Um, aluminum, it's the go-to material for automatics. Um, and it, it helps to contribute to the low weight of this knife. Also, sort of this narrow, uh, less material handle profile design brings that weight down as well. So we've got CPM 154CM, we've got aluminum, we've got blackened stainless steel small parts, including this sort of geometric uh, done triangular um, pivot cap here on the show side. And uh, you can see the USA flag for Made in USA. Let's take a look at this. This is a 7650 from Kai USA CPM 154. Kershaw, Kershaw Auto. Um, as all the other launch series automatics that I have owned, taken a look at, I've handled many of these probably I'd say 30 or 40 of different variants uh, from the launch one to the launch 14. Uh, I've never seen an issue with any of these. Uh, I hand these knives to sort of non-knife enthusiasts. They think they're really neato, but the majority of them are scared of these knives because they fire so hard. Kershaw is using very good high torsion springs in these knives. This is a very, very fast open. I'm going to open it a few times and then I'll go back and see how this is coming across in the frame speed on this video. Uh, it fires hard. The people that I hand these knives to, they're like, oh my God, that's going to jump right out of my hand. It scares them. Uh, you know, knife enthusiasts, they know that's the sign of a good automatic. You want it to open as hard as it can without causing any lockup issues. Um, I have heard some people complain about their Kershaw autos. They fire so hard that they can get a little bit of bounce back off of the stop pin. I have not come across that myself. But if you're going to have a problem with an automatic, it opening too hard, I, that's a desirable problem for me. Um, you can typically, on something that you have some uh, stop pin bounce, you can typically go in and just snug the pivot just a little bit. That will introduce a little more friction on that pivot, and it will slow the blade down just enough to stop that bounce back. Um, they just use some strong springs, very high quality feeling, very high quality feeling. Let's go into fit and finish very quickly. Uh, blade wise, fit and finish is uh, Kershaw USA, guys. It is very well done. Uh, the grinds are symmetrical from side to side. They're very clean. You can see as ground satin on all the grinds. A black finish on the flats here. You know, the whole blade is, you know, finished in a black. And then they come back and they do the uh, the last grinds on it, the finish grinds on it. And they grind that black off. So that's how you get that two-tone. Uh, just excellently done. And if you like a nice flat-edged Warncliffe, you will love this. This is a very modern, uh, very pointy, very sort of tactical Warren Cliff with a big old swedge. Big old, big old swedge. Look at how nice and thin it gets on the top of that blade. 
This is a very stabby, pokey worn cliff. It does not have a blunt tip to it. It is very acute. And when I say very acute, that is super duper sharp. That's sharp as shit in technical terms. So, um, been finished on the blade. I cannot, I cannot say anything bad about that. It came out of the box scary sharp. And you know what? I've carried this knife quite a bit. Um, right before I started this video, I had to blow all the lint out of this knife and I damn, I blew it all over my background. Then I had to bring in a piece of rolled up tape and clean all that off. I've really enjoyed carrying this knife. It is so narrow that it fits in the pocket and it takes up barely any space at all. You add it in, you add in that what I think now is a classic pocket clip design for Kershaw. This is the pocket clip from the um, the Natrix. And this is the same pocket clip that I did the video on replacing the pocket clip on the Launch 8. That comes with a very crappy, ugly pocket clip. And I took the pocket clip off of one of my Natrix models and put it on there. And it was perfect for that knife. We'll see it again but they're using that pocket clip on this knife. So you see, you're going to get really deep carry. They've done a good job. They could have used flathead screws on it. But you know what? That's never been an issue for me. Uh, a lot of people complain about it. So people won't be happy with that. But you know what? At $125 for an American-made uh, automatic, this premium as far as making materials, I'd, I don't give a shit about those screws. As long as they go in my pocket, I don't give a crap. Um, so that's your deep carry on that. Just a little bit sticking out so you can grab a hold of it. Uh, fit and finish in the handle. Let's take a very, very, very close look at this handle. I'm going to try to give you every angle, every facet so you can see the machining in detail. Uh, all of these machined low spots, recesses, through machine spots, all of them crisply done, perfectly executed. Uh, that is very, very clean looking machining and a very interesting knife handle. You follow that with the hard coat anodizing. Uh, that will be a mil spec hard coat anodizing in black. And it is um, it is nice and thick. And like I say, I have been carrying this knife quite a bit. And I've got no nicks on it. Now, um, hard coat anodizing on aluminum, uh, it's not the toughest coat. And no matter who does it, but it will last. Um, now, I wouldn't put this knife down in a pocket with change or anything because the metal change would eat that coating up eventually. Uh, but it has been a quality hard coat anodization on the aluminum, uh, just as good as anything else that I have uh, seen myself, whether considered mill spec or not. Let's take a look at the spine of the handle. They don't just give you the profile of this handle. Once you go up around the perimeter of this handle, look at all of this machining. Okay, this is this is quite a bit of machining passes in here to add all of this detail in. You've got a hidden tucked in sort of lanyard attachment point there. Uh, although I'm not a big lanyard person for those that are, there you go. That pocket clip, deep carry pocket clip, is reversible, although the firing button is not. Uh, but that's not a big deal as far as automatics go. You can see there, left-handed. I'm not left-handed at all. I have no problem orienting to use that button. Um, yeah, fit and finish on this knife is exemplary. Let's go into the action. Well, you can see, uh, unless I've got the frame rate too slow there, and you can see nothing but a blur as it opens, this knife opens hard as all of my launch autos do. And every one I've handled has as well. Um, there is absolutely, absolutely not even the most microscopic sense of play in this knife at all on the lock. Um, it came out of the box perfectly centered and... Uh, 
like I say, it uh, it opens hard. It opens hard every time. It locks up every time. Um, for those of you that like safeties on autos, which I do not, uh, it does not have a safety, but I've had zero issues with this knife as the button is in a recessed spot on the handle. Okay, so it does not stick up very proud at all. I've had zero issues with this or any other automatic opening up in my pocket. Typically, when you have people complain about an automatic opening up in their pocket, it's because they carry something else in that pocket as well. That is an absolute no-no when carrying an automatic knife without a safety. Never carry anything else in that pocket. It will get up against a button. Open that up in your pocket. And if this knife with that tip opens up in your pocket, sorry about that shaking, guys. Uh, if it opens up in your pocket, it, it's going to cut your leg. And it'll, it'll stab right in there with zero effort at all. Uh, so be careful about not carrying anything else in your pocket with an automatic. So there we go. There's a look at the Launch 13. If you love this aggressive, modern Warncliffe type of blade profile, uh, you like this sort of uh, very modern, industrial, layered machine look on the handle, you will love this knife. And a lot of people look at it and they go, ah, that handle is really narrow. But it is a perfect shape. Once you have one in the hand, you will not believe how good it feels as narrow as it is. And it also does give you nearly the half inch of thickness. It is sort of the average point for uh, knives we want to see in the handle thickness. So it's, it feels like a very balanced handle. Um, a couple of nice sort of wide open shallow finger choils there. Narrow remainder of the handle. Uh, it's very stylized, but fortunately it is not form over function. It does feel very comfortable in the hand. I cannot recommend this knife any higher as well as the rest of the launch series from Kershaw USA. Now, the next thing we've got here, we're going to take a look at my other launch uh, side opening automatics. This is the launch one. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it is the knife that started this series out uh, very much in the classic sort of um, leaf shaped drop point profile that has been very popular with Kershaw for the last decade. This knife fires very hard. Now, this is a, a newer production version of this knife. I had an exclusive from somebody years ago that I ended up selling to a young man that his dad wanted one of those and they never could get it. So I sold it to him thinking I could always go back and get another one. And I did. I went back and grabbed another one in the basic black on black with the red firing button. And this knife is so good. It's <laughs> It fires so hard. It fires so hard. And you get a little more of that feel of the firing hard because there's more weight to the blade than in the 13. It's a bigger, a bigger, heavier knife overall. So you get a really powerful thump when this thing fires open and stops on that stop pin. And it feels so good in the hand. And again, even though it is a, a little more simple machined um, design on the launch one. It is still exquisitely done and then nice detailing around the parameter. Again, hidden away um, lanyard attachment point there. And you know what? It's just a fantastic, fantastic knife. Uh, reversible pocket clip on it. And it does come with the old school pocket clip from Kershaw, which is not deep carry, but this pocket clip um, the same as the pocket clip that Emerson Knives uses, the same basic pocket clip that that um, Benchmade used. Uh, this design style of pocket clip was super popular on custom knives. There is basically a clip like this that is on my custom uh, Casper folder uh, from Crawford Knives. Um, just a fantastic working pocket clip and it just disappears in the hand I, mean, I can barely feel there's a pocket clip there the launch one such a good good knife yeah 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the last launch that I've got in my collection is, of course, the Launch 8. And this is a sort of a semi-custom matte disc and modified version uh, from the Blade Show a few years ago. And you can see that I have changed out the pocket clip to the Natrix-style uh, pocket clip, Matrix-style name. Which one was it? There was a whole battle about that pocket clip. So if I'm saying the N instead of the M or the M instead of the N, the guys just overlook that. I don't care about that crap. I'm not into the drama. Uh, but that pocket clip, that was a big video for me. A lot of people have touched base with me over the last couple of years on that video, swapping that out. And again, fantastic action on this little stiletto let's look at that blade <laughs> so so badass i am so shaky guys i'm sorry i'm afraid i'm gonna stab myself that is so so instantly pierces it you just touch it and it pierces no pressure at all that is a dangerous dangerously sharp blade right there pointy sharp blade um, and it's lightweight blade. Uh, again, they're all in CPM 154. Uh, this one's got the fat carbon, uh, what is the snake skin was the one that had the bronze coloring in it, I believe. And I love fat carbon products. I've got it on a couple of my knives and I love it. In fact, I was just talking to Jeffrey Orthopedic earlier today and he had just, um, just ordered a knife, uh, a Jack Wolf, I think, and it had the green fat carbon. I think it's what they call forest, I believe. Uh, and I think he's like, um, you know, trying to collect all the colors and he's got a few of them in the Arctic storm, like on my paramilitary two, my Smoky Mountain exclusive paramilitary two. He's getting tired of that, so he went with the green. Um, but fat carbon, really, really nice stuff. Very attractive. The Launch 8 is probably my favorite of the Launch series. It is, hands down, I think one of the coolest American-made autos that's been made in the last 10 years. And these knives for the regular, with the regular carbon fiber inlay, were like $100. $100 for an American-made side-opening automatic with this kind of action. CPM 154 for the blade steel. Excellent machining and finishing. All of these knives open very hard. Um, they're just all so well made. There's the Launch 13 again. Look at how detailed that is. Um, let's get down in this sort of recess right here. Now you can see this is not just a flat bottom recess. You've got this sort of crossbar here with the radius bottom on it. Um, it's a lot of very interesting machining on this knife. This, the back of this, look at that. They could have just done anything on the back of this. And they put all of this detail in on an American-made automatic for about $125. That's insane. That's insane. The Kershaw launch series of side-opening automatics are hands down with zero competition, the absolute best value in an automatic knife. Damn sure the best value in an American-made automatic uh, the next lowest price company, I won't mention, they're a super high quality company, but you're going to be looking at $200 plus at entry level on their product. And it's well worth it. Don't get me wrong. Don't get this twisted. But this, these other uh, launch series automatics, all of these knives for around $100 between $100 and $150 for the entire line of these knives. That is a steal. That is absolutely a steal in an American-made side opening automatic. So there you go. The Kershaw USA Launch 13 side opening automatic, along with the Kershaw USA Launch 8 and Launch 1 for just a little bit of look at Bazon Blades.
Kershaw Launch Series collection. And you know what? I'm pretty sure I will buy others of these knives. I wholeheartedly recommend these knives. If you, listen to this, if you can legally own one of these knives where you live, you should buy one. If you can legally carry one, you should carry one just for the enjoyment factor. If you cannot, don't get it. It's not worth the hassle. It doesn't do anything that a manual knife doesn't do. It's just got that sort of neato factor to it. So, disclaimer aside, buy one of these. Whatever the model is from the launch series, go out, pick one that you love the look of and get it just to get one into your collection. They're that damn good. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch another one of my videos. They're so long and it hurts people's vaginas to watch such a long video, but that's just the way I do it because we're pounding that vagina here at Baz on Blades with these long videos. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.